Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mark, endoscopic spine specialist. Last time we met, we talked about a large central disc protrusion as discussed by Dr. Tony Young as he was hosting the IITTSS meeting in Phoenix, Arizona. Today, I'd like to have you hear his comments about endoscopic lumbar rhizotomy for low back pain and his, some of his thoughts about that particular procedure. Hope you enjoy. Uh, recently, uh, I was asked some questions and I was going to ask for some clarification from Dr. Young uh, about which branches of the dorsal primary rami uh, that could be divided safely uh, for treatment of uh, facet pain. Uh, so there's three branches. And there's the medial, intermediate, and lateral branches. And uh, uh, people have asked me that uh, since the longissimus muscle and the uh, multifidus are receiving innervation from these lateral branches that maybe uh, it's not appropriate to divide them. What, what is your thought about this? I would target the medial branch as the one causing the facet pain mostly yeah. but I, if I see the intermediate and lateral branch there are a lot of people with facet pain that have muscle spasm and so I would eliminate the innervation that causes involuntary muscle spasm that is not necessarily bad because it's not enough to denervate the muscle. It's only enough to decrease the severity of muscle spasm in addition to the, the facet pain. So a lot of doctors will prescribe muscle relaxants and pain pills or injections. This way you're taking care of both. Okay. And what about the levels? Uh, certainly uh, the lower levels, uh, 4, 5, 5, S1, maybe 3, 4, but is, is three, is, can you do it to all the levels in the spine or what levels are these actually good for? All levels. I start at 4, 5, and 1 and most of the time, maybe 80, 90 percent of the time, they're satisfied. Sometimes some of the pain come back, I would then consider ablating the nerves at L1 to L3. Now, there is some literature that says that all afferent fibers from the lower levels are collected at, at the dorsal ganglia at L2. So theoretically, if you just block L2, you get everything below, but that doesn't work in, for practical purposes. Um, if I get enough relief at 4 or 5, I would just stop there. Uh, if they still have some trouble. Occasionally I would go to L1, 2, and 3. That provides additional relief, but it's not as consistent as 4, 5, and 1 because the dorsal ramus sends the branches at a different uh, angle. It doesn't follow the textbook. The medial branch sometimes misses going across the spinous process because of the anatomy. It goes into the facet joint before it crosses the spinous process or it's high enough that we miss getting the nerve at, at the base of the spinous process. So in that case, more likely I would try to denervate the facet wall at the same time. Okay, but us and usually though, this is uh, the rhizotomy would be preceded by some type of block where you could determine yes. the success? Yes, I would do, do a medial branch block, yeah. but not the way that ISIS or the injection people want to have them validated. Their technology is different. They use a little thin wire they have to put at a specific spot. But in my, uh, my opinion and my experience, it, having done multiple dissections, 30% of the time the nerve is not even there. So they're, that the best they're going to get 70% success. But in reality, they'll get less than 50% because the nerve, even if it's there, it could be missed or it could be protected by an osseous tunnel. In other words, it's protected by bone and scar tissue and the little uh, wire is not enough to, to ablate the nerve. You have to then strip all the soft tissue from the bone in order to be able to get the nerve. And just out of curiosity, when doing these uh, endoscopically in a direct vision, how often do you visualize the nerves? I visualize it maybe half the time. If I don't see it, then I would spend more time to go up the wall of the facet because the nerve has to go past the facet in order to get to the joint. Yep. And sometimes the nerve is small, sometimes it's caught in scar tissue. And if I were trying to dissect it, I don't need to. I just need to know that if I ablate the nerves as they traverse this area to the facet, 
I will get it most of the time. Not 100%, about 90% of the time. Okay, sounds great. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be here at IITTSS this week. And uh, I look forward to our next uh, get together. Thanks for coming. I get, I'm getting to know you very well. You've been a very good participant of the workshops and eventually I think you'll be as good or better than many of the faculty. Uh, appreciate it. Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed Dr. Young and his uh, really thorough and excellent comments on this particular procedure. If you've got any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me or Dr. Young. Thanks very much for watching.